Hey guys, it's Aaron, the home for mobile reviews, A.C, and today we're gonna do a review of the Mophie Juice Pack H2 Pro. This is a tough iPhone case that's waterproof and has a spare battery pack, and it tries to do all those things, but it really doesn't do any of them well. The H2 Pro is a waterproof, shockproof case that comes with a 2,750 milliamp spare battery. The battery pack works generally well, and it has a neat feature. It looks like it's overcharging, but it's not, and the entire setup might work, might work better than other battery cases that just shut off. Accessing your iPhone inside this case is mildly frustrating and the entire case is very difficult to handle. Now, there is one redeeming fact with the Mophie H2 Pro and that has to deal with the screen protection. Now, for our Mophie H2 Pro review, we've given this iPhone battery case a score of 3.1As out of 5. This is actually one of the lowest rated cases that we've reviewed as it's generally very frustrating to use, especially when compared to a similar case, the LifeProof Free Power. I will give a quick comparison between these two cases at the end of the video, and if you're looking for something that has a spare battery in but that isn't waterproof, consider checking out a review of the OtterBox Resurgence. If you're looking just for regular waterproof cases, well, we've got you covered. For that, you just need to check out our comparison tool. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, a dot ca. Now, mobile reviews, a dot ca. We base all our reviews on actual usage, so we will spend a bunch of time with them, like leaving it out in the rain or in the tub with me while I watch shows on Netflix with it, dropping it on concrete. I used this case while on a short trip to Portland, where I took a bunch of really green pictures, and I filmed Monty run around like the energetic dog that he is. So basically, I've done everything that a normal person would probably do with this case. In terms of design, this is a bulky case, but that's to be expected. Since it does contain a spare battery, installation of the case is fairly simple. And like most other waterproof cases, it's probably going to require you to use a coin to pop it open. In terms of build quality, there are some really good things that the Mophie H2 Pro and some really odd things. Generally, the case feels very solid. It feels generally well built, especially when compared to the free power, as it doesn't show as much scuffing after a date with concrete. Now, with that being said, holding the case with one hand is difficult given the size of the case as well as the slick texture. However, the funny thing is that the slick texture is actually grippy enough to keep your iPhone from slipping around on a flat surface, but it's gonna slip out of your hand very easily. So it's just, that's just one of the odd things about the H2 Pro. As an interesting side note, the texture on the H2 Pro's box makes it is actually better than the texture on the actual H2 Pro. In terms of protection, it's waterproof up to four feet. It is shockproof up to four feet. But if you're looking on their uh, packaging, you wouldn't believe it because it's in tiny, tiny little letters. Now, if you need a full rundown of the drop test and water test, do check out that torture test video I did for the H2 Pro. I'm not going to go into much detail for that protection because most of the information I've covered in that video Screen protection is going to be a little better than other cases because Mophie actually advises you to use two screen protectors. They include a thin plastic screen protector with the package, but you can get away without using it, but I suggest you do because screen usability takes a hit if you don't. Now, I don't know if this is a excuse for poor build quality for the gap between the iPhone and the screen protector, but having that second screen protector actually makes the Mophie H2 Pro a little more uh, situationally friendly. And what I mean by that is you're able to take your iPhone in and out of this case and still use um, it with a slim case with the screen protector on it. So it's nice in that manner. A lot of people ask me, should I put a screen protector in a waterproof case? I generally say no because they're built not to have them. But with the H2 Pro, it's built to use a screen protector. You just got to be careful that the screen protector isn't too thick. I've got a bodyguard screen protector on this one iPhone and it's so tight that the screen usability is really, really awful. You got to make sure that it's a thin plastic one. Your glass ones are probably not going to work. Accessing your iPhone inside this case is where the H2 Pro falls flat on its face. The buttons are tough to use and after a couple of installs, the mute switch stopped completely working. The camera flash is generally uncovered and the glass covering the lens doesn't get in the way of pictures, which is, I guess, nice. Sound from the H2 Pro is actually good and bad. Sound coming from the bottom speaker is quite nice. It's actually quite loud and unlike the free power, covering up the speaker cutout doesn't mute the iPhone much, so you're going to be able to hear your iPhone almost anywhere. Sound coming from the earpiece speaker is quite Quite muted and call quality like most waterproof cases makes it sound like you're in a box. Screen viewability is extremely horrendous with the default screen protector. The exterior screen protector diffuses your screen slightly. The included screen protector really diffuses the screen. The gaps in the screen protector are quite noticeable and it makes your entire touchscreen look wavy. When viewing the iPhone screen out in the sun, it really blows out the contrast of the iPhones, make, making it almost seem unviewable. Some might argue that this is an anti-glare feature, I just think it's just annoying. This is one of the worst iPhone cases that we've come across for functionality and it is right down there with the Tech 21 Patriot. Now with all that being said, it will definitely double the life of your iPhone 6. The battery life on your iPhone 6 isn't terrible, it's better than what 
the iPhone 5 and the 5S's were. Um, but having this thing, you can definitely play a mobile game on your iPhone all day without any problem. I did that with Deadville 3 Gangs of Deadville, or Rebuild 3 Gangs of Deadville, and my eyes hurt after that nine hour marathon. The moment your battery on your iPhone hits 100%, it starts drawing power from the H2 Pro rather than the iPhone's battery. This is different than the LifeProof and the OtterBox cases because the moment they hit 100, it just turns off, and so your iPhone starts draining. This is not the case with the H2 Pro. You will all Always have a full iPhone battery charge with the H2 Pro, which is, in my opinion, might be a better thing than having it just automatically shut off. So that's all I got for the H2 Pro. Again, this isn't a great case. I don't think I would go out of my way to recommend it. Um, before I get into the comparison with the free power, if this is the first time you watch my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. Ask me questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, find me on Google Plus, Twitter, as well as Facebook and all those other wonderful social media platforms. Um, in, in between the free power and the Mophie H2 Pro, I would go with the free power. It's a tougher case. This is only droppable and waterproof to four feet. The free power is six feet. It's got an auto shut off feature. The screen, despite being a, a free, a life proof free, where the screen protector is generally just off it's better than this setup unless you really want to keep two screen protectors on but why would you the sound is a little better through the h2 pro because if you were to cover up the bottom it's not going to mute it completely whereas when you cover the, those little sound slits on the free power it's going to mute the sound significantly but that seems such a small thing when you consider that you're going to the point of getting one of these cases is to use it in some pretty extreme places like outside right now it's raining and you wouldn't want to take a regular iphone battery case out there and use it because it would just get all wet and you'd ruin your iphone so go with the free power if you're trying to figure out between the two um that's all i got thanks for watching